Praise the Lord and welcome to River the Water Christian Center, your place of healing, restoration, and renewal. We thank you for tuning in to, with us today. We are excited to hear what the Lord has for us today. Truly, we bring greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have given God the honor uh, for being the head of our lives and truly honor us. Uh, praise God, Pastor Russ, praise God, my beloved husband, and, uh, and we just thank the Lord for you joining us. We want you right now to just share this time, just, just uh, share, with, just, just tune in, just broadcast with someone else right now as you tune in. We're going to go before the throne of grace, and we're going to ask that you just continue to put your prayer requests on the screen. One of the things we like to do here is to make sure that uh, you and submit your prayer request. Amen? Submit your prayer request in. Uh, so at the end, we will continue to pray for you. And we thank God because it's a miracle working God. And there have been some testimonies. Amen? The breakthroughs has been some testimonies of miracles that has happened just this past week. We want you to be encouraged, people of God, and know that God, amen, has a word for you and he has answers for you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Let's go before the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we pray, we're asking you even right now, Lord, Lord God, to look upon those that are tuning in, Lord God. Oh God, this morning that's joining us, we're asking you, Lord God, to just have your way today. Show your hands strong, Father God. Look upon each and every one, Lord God, that is joined in, and let your presence, Lord God, permeate where they are. Invade their space, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that you've given this time. Lord God, that has been set aside, Lord God, for you. And Lord, we pray even right now that you would just continue, Lord God, to have your hand of mercy upon them. We rebuke, oh God, everything, Lord God, that is unlike you, that will cause us, Lord God, to not hear your word, that will cause us to be discouraged. Encourage your down uh, past heart today. Encourage, Lord God, and strengthen, Lord God, the weak hands. Strengthen and confirm the feeble knees in the name of Jesus. Oh God, let God arise. Let God arise. And the enemy be scattered. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, have your way, oh God. Have your way. We thank you, Lord God, for opening the heavens. We thank you, Lord God, for your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. We can't do nothing without you, oh God. So we give you the honor and give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again. Thank you again for joining us. Praise God. And know that he is ready to do what you're asking him to do. Amen. We thank God right now. We have Pastor Russ with us. Amen. And he's going to, amen, give us a word from the Lord. And the Lord just let the Lord use you. Amen. Again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's one preacher, uh, we, like you say all the time. But we just thank God today that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice, preacher, in the midst of COVID? Yes, we shall rejoice and be glad in it, knowing that God is yet still God over everything that we're going through. And I understand, as I deal with people, we deal with people as pastors, workers, wherever we go, there's been a lot going on with COVID. We know that. You know, there's been... Unfortunately, deaths and sickness and all kinds of effects from that. We know they, everybody's economy has been affected by it as well. So much is going on. It just seems like, oh, God, when's it going to end? When's it going to end? Or oh, what's happening in the midst of it? But I want to just share an encouraging word with you today out of, uh, out of, of course, the word of God. But I just want you to realize that in the background, every situation, we can't see and we can't feel. The hand of God is always present. To bring us not only through, but to bring us through better than we were when we went in. Amen. 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 I'm glad you already prayed, but just, just, just allow me, please. Father, Amen. in Jesus' name, we thank you. We praise you for your word. Your word is true all by itself. But Lord, when your word comes to us by the blessing of the Holy Ghost, Lord God, it enters into the inside of our lives. It brings forth the fruit that you told us to bring forth. So I pray, God, for these hearers, Lord God, that you bless them to be fruitful in the name of Jesus. I pray as well, Lord, you take my tongue. My tongue of clay, my lips of clay, Lord, I take whatever this is that I got now and use it for your glory in touching the lives of those that are here today. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. 
I just like to say that as I uh, go through this uh, this short uh, message, that we often speak of Solomon's temple in the Old Testament. Solomon's temple is often referred to as like a prototype, if you will, of the Christian church. So we're going to review some things out of about Solomon's temple to uh, allow us to see the process and the purpose that for that temple also fits into what we're doing. In fact, when I finish, I hope that this word will be kind of like that honey that Jonathan found at one time in the midst of the battle. Everybody else was weary and weak because of what they were going through, like some of us are going through right now. But Jonathan was able to taste that honey and receive a, a, such a blessing of increase and enlightenment in the midst of that. So I just want that to be for you today, all right? So join with me today. Let's look in the word of God. Let's live. Let's taste and see that the Lord is... Good. Good. I knew somebody else was here to say amen. Praise the Lord. Turn to your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 7. Amen. It's going to be one verse today. And I want to say while you're turning, that we often think of the temple, we are the temple of God, we often think as our individual body being a temple. But let us re be reminded that besides the verse I'm going to share here, uh, somewhere in the scripture it tells us that we are living stone, we are lively stone. Yes. I want you to think more so of the temple being the whole body of Christ. All right? Because if you think of it that way, as we go into this, we'll, we'll get a little something else out of it. So again, I'm going to make three points out of this. And we like to splash for three points, and we're going to win the game. We're going to go and cheer for the Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. They're shaking their heads. See, I'm being corny, but it's all right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> First Kings chapter 6. I'm just going to read that one verse, verse 7. And it reads, oh, King James Version, by the way. I'm just going to stick there. And it reads, and the, and the house, when it was in building, was built of stone made ready before it was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building. Thank God for the reading of his holy word. Amen. Amen. I'm going to make three points out of this. I want to touch on one word right now to start with, and that's the word tool. Somebody say tool. 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 All right. A tool, I'm not going to get real deep in Webster's meaning, but in looking around some definitions, this is what I pulled out for a tool. A tool is something used to prepare for use. That is, a tool is something you use to prepare something else for the use that you have created for, or that you have in mind, okay? Amen. So it says in the scriptures that uh, there would be the hammer or tool heard in the house, but let me, let me deal with something else. It's clearly in the scriptures that the work was done outside of the house. Let me just share uh, uh, just two uh, examples to see where I'm going. Uh, as we should know, in case you've forgotten, you see people in your space and in your face, you see situations arising to, to try to pull you down and to make you feel unworthy, make you feel disgraced the whole nine yards. Those are just uh, things in the atmosphere that seemingly, seemingly have no uh, real reflection of God. Let me just show you something right quick. Let me speak of the man called Job. Job in the Bible went through some situations. He went through loss of people. He lost his family, lost the support of his wife, lost his children, lost uh, his so-called friends, began to somewhat be as enemies with the words they used to speak to him. Um, and then he went through situations. He lost all of his, uh, his cattle and all these things that he lost. Uh, and of course, we know in the story, in the background, where Job and his friends couldn't see was Satan up there before God, mm -hmm. speaking and, and trying to have influence in the earth through the situation. We often look at the people and the situations as Satan we go through and think, oh, it's the end of the world, they're going to kill me, they're going to kill me. Where is God? Where is God? Where is God? Mm. Let me just say something out of this right quick. God, first off, is the master craftsman. In the Bible, we know that yeah. God created the heaven and the earth, and he made it not just to have something to do. He made it for us. He made the heaven and the earth for us. He was actually in the process of doing all of that because he wanted us. He wanted us to have a place where he could relate to us. He's the master craftsman of everything. Everything that you see, every car, every bird, well, yeah, every bird, every plane, everything that you see, somewhere in the background, you get to the final uh, uh, beginning of it, you will find God. God is the master craftsman. Yeah. So that being said, let me talk to you about the people, the situations, and that old devil Satan you're dealing with. All else that comes after God is but a tool. Everything else that we face and that we go through have, is a part of a situation of a tool. It's there to prepare us for use. 
Right. It's there to make us, to be part of that which shapes us and puts us in a position that we are really ready for God's use. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. It says he created and he made. God yeah. created man in his image and his likeness. And then, of course, we have a situation with Adam. And God said, I'm not done yet. I created man. But guess what? I'm going to make him. I'm going to remake him. I'm going to reform him in my, in my image and my likeness. So these things that's going on around you, God using them as tools. So I say God using them as tools. I'm going to show you how to admit it. They're tools. They're just there to show and emphasize and make light, make plain other aspects of the cre of, of God and his power, of God and his love, of God and his mercy. But let me touch one other person and I'm going to go a little further into that tool. Just for a minute. And that's Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. We just clarified that God is the master craftsman. Whatever else is going on, God is the master craftsman. Now, if you look at the life of Jesus, it's so clear that he said nothing but God gave him to say. He went nowhere but the Father had him to go. He was born in, uh, uh, through a virgin because of the will and the plan of God, which was prophesied many years before he came. Why? Because even in the course, especially in the life of his son, we said God was the master craftsman. But watch this. Even Jesus had to deal with tools. Somebody say tools. Yeah. Jesus had to deal with people. He had to deal with situations, and he had to deal with Satan. All coming at him, they thought, for what they wanted. The people thought, wow, this is a great Messiah with all his power. I can get some money out of him. I can get my healing out of him. I can get what I want out of him. It's, they, 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 they didn't think of him in the right manner. But in their doing that, the Lord still used those same people to show how good his power was, how full his love was, and he yet and still loved sinful man and helped them in all these situations, even though their mind frame was not towards heaven. He used them as tools. Uh, situations. Jesus had different situations. The marriage at Cana, where they ran out of, of, of wine. That was not a bad situation that just happened and Jesus just happened to be there. No, the Father used that situation as a tool to show just how much care and concern he had for the one that was getting married and the governor of the marriage, that they would not be embarrassed because things didn't go right. He just wanted to show that his power was so great, he could take simple water. Thank you. I'm take a sip. And make it the wine. No, he did not take Great soda and make it the wine. He didn't take something else that already had man's hands on it and change it. He took something that was already divinely created in one state and then he came behind it and he made it in something else. It was just a tool. I said, I want to say this that Jesus, God was the master craftsman and all else was tools, but the purpose of all of that was that Jesus being here was uh, the, the show that he was the redemption yeah. for all who were receiving. His life, everything he went through, showed that he was. Our Redeemer. So, say our Redeemer. Our Redeemer. So, just keep that in mind that our Creator is allowing us to go through these certain things that we go through that will be a testimony of God's goodness. Job in the end was a perfect testimony of God's goodness. Mm -hmm. After all that he went through, when God blessed, he was more blessed in every aspect of his life at the end than he was in the beginning. So much so that he didn't have to turn around and bless his friends. My friend, whatever you're going to continue to trust God, and you'll bless your friends. But as well, remember that all the things that Jesus went through was just simply as our Redeemer for all those that receive it. So let me just move on just a little bit more to let you know that everything that you're going through, COVID and everything else, don't think of it as your death. Think of it as just a tool. Let me go a little further. Because the Creator is making your testimony as a tool. Again, in this verse, uh, verse uh, 7 of, verse, of chapter 6 of 1 Kings, it says in there, I'm going to find my place. Just what happened, this verse was right in the middle of a page turn. And the house when it was in building was built of stone made ready before it was brought thither. Somebody say made ready. Made ready. The word made ready, I ain't going to get deep in the but I'm just going to throw a little couple words out there. Made ready means complete. Mm -hmm. That these stones were made complete. Now, when you think of complete, I want you to look at it this way. These stones, the way they created buildings back then, the way they built such things as the pyramids and various other things, they prepared them elsewhere. That's what it says in the truth. They prepared elsewhere. Watch how they prepared. First, they dug in the earth to where they found the granite or the marble or whatever they're working with, and they cut it out in a piece that was close to the size of what they wanted. That is, they took a complete piece. They take pieces of marble and put them together. No, they took a complete piece first to start with and put that on wherever they want to work with. Somebody say complete. Complete. But when they had that complete piece, it wasn't going to be completely ready to go to that tabernacle and be made to fit with everything else until it was made ready. Made ready, another meaning for made ready, blew my mind when I looked it up in the Greek, in the Hebrew, excuse me, was friendly. And I said, how in the world do you make concrete friendly? Or how do you make these slabs friendly? Simply this, as they were pulled out complete, they had angles 
and, and bridges and stuff like that. They were not in, in an angle. Of, Pastor Jill's not here. Watch this. Don't move, Pastor Jill. I love you. Don't beat me up. If I come to Pastor Jill like this, this is a bad angle for us to be able to sit here and participate together, is it not? This is what happens as well. As God was making those stones, they came out complete, but they were not friendly. They were not in a position where they could be joined together properly and build a thing for the Lord. So I say, friendly. Right. Watch this. So God takes them and he brings them out complete. Bam. Then he begins to knock off some of that hard angles to get them just the right angle. So they're line upon line and precept upon precept. But they fit together. But then there's still something else that got to be worked out. God's making us ready. This is what he's doing. And this blew my mind. I'm looking up the word made ready in, in, in my little books. And it came up that the word made ready means peaceable. Somebody say peaceable. Peaceable. Don't you know that after your mother and father have raised you in your college or your army or wherever else you went to to come into life and done certain things in your life, there's still some parts of your life that just ain't perfect. They're like birds. I'm using the word bird. B-U-R, I think, might be too. I don't know. B-U-R. Bird is something like a, a hard like if you If you break a nail or cut a nail and they just right and it scrapes across some fabric and pulls it, it's like a bird. It's something that's aggravated, something that'll make rips and tears when it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. But God is making us ready through all this that we're going through, COVID, the economy, mm -hmm. these things, all the hatred that's going on right now. There's situations that's going on that's not here to kill us. They're actually here to make us ready, to make us peaceable. We go through these things and we come through on the other side without those birds. So when we come together and God fits us together, we don't scrape each other up. God's working on us to make us peaceable. He's getting rid of the bumps and the bruises so we don't bump and bruise each other as he puts us together in the temple. He's getting rid of those ridges so we don't make long scrapes on each other as we're put in place. God is making us ready. That's why I says, and, and you know, I thought about quote this. I can't. I'm not that good. I'm going to turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, and I'm going to do this real quick, real quick. I should have marked it. Somebody say Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. And 16. And 16. Thank you for reminding me. I found it. It says this. And talking about the birds. Again, God's making us ready. He's making us complete. He's making us friendly. He's making us peaceful. Why? Because from the whole body, from, for, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which supplies every joint according to the effectual working of the measure of every part, making increase in the body unto the edifying of itself in love. I know that was long, but what they're simply saying is God did all of that in advance. God's allowed all these things that's happening in our lives outside the church where we can't come together and congregate. So when we get together, when we get this thing back together, we'll have all this stuff worked out and we can fitly join together. We can be compacted together. We can be sure, strong, and found to do his work. So just keep that in your remembrance. As you're going through some things right now, God is working something. Here's the big thing. I'm going to get out of here real quick. It says in the scripture, it says in the scripture right here, and I'll read it again. It says, and the house when it was in Building was built of stone, made ready before it was brought hither, thither, excuse me, so that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in the building. You know what? God has allowed all this stuff to go on while we're not in the house to prepare us, to get rid of all those times when we're going to hit us with the hammer and chisel, we're going to go, ow! In all situations we're going to go through with each other, we'll be talking to each other the wrong way, or certain things are going to happen. All that stuff happens to get us ready so when we get in the house of the Lord, this is what's going to happen. The only thing that's going to be heard in the house of God is His voice. Amen. I used to criticize when I heard people say, Oh, we're going to build a house of God, and this is going to be the auditorium. And I said, That's a bad word. That's a word for the world. But I didn't realize that auditorium is not really a bad word. Because when we come to the house of God, Yes, we want to see the miracles and all that whole night, but when you look at the way it's put together, it is a perfect auditorium. It's a place to come in and hear what thus saith the Lord. And all this we're going through right now is preparing us to get ourselves, our minds, our image, our likeness, and all that stuff out the way that when he speaks, there's no other voice being heard but his. It says in Habakkuk chapter 2 and 20, the Lord is his holy temple. All these things we're going through right now where we can't join in the body, in the building, is making us ready. So when we step in, the only thing that we heard, the Lord is in his holy temple. Every sound will line up the Lord being in his holy temple. Every song of praise and worship will line up with his sin being the Lord in his holy temple. The Lord is making it so there's nothing else to be heard. Nothing else gets the glory nor the honor but his. This is another thing he's lining us up for. It comes out in Matthew chapter 17 verse 5. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Thank God we have great preachers that come but the thing he's lining us up to do is when we speak they look at us like Peter and they say Ain't you one of them? You sound just like him. When you speak, I hear him. 
That's what they were really trying to say to Peter. When you talk, you I hear the man and somebody on the, that, that, that they're beating up, putting on the cross. You got to be one of those. Church, the things we're going through right now is all lining us up that when we get in the house, that's the only thing that's being heard. Finally, we are his witnesses. We are going through all the things we're going through right now. And Pastor John Heaven just talked about some things that just happened in the last 24 hours. We're going to get there now. But these things are happening that we are his witnesses in every situation. When we do get together in the house of God and we do get a chance to say something, we will be his witnesses of let me tell you what happened to me in the rock quarry. Let me tell you what happened while they was buzzing that saw down my side. Let me tell you what happened when they was rubbing that sandpaper over here. Let me tell you when they told me I was going to die. And I quoted the word and said, I shall not die but live and declare the words of the Lord. Why? Because we're going to be his witnesses. Somebody say his witnesses. His witnesses. I'm going to close with this. The Father is building us as a church where the head, who is Christ, is the only one speaking in the earth. So the things that we're going through, it's all lining us up. It's all making us ready. All that cutting, chiseling, hurt that you're going through right now, continue to trust God, knowing that the chisel may be an enemy. It may be a situation. It may be a, a circumstance. It might be the devil himself. But back at the back is the master craftsman making you ready for his work. In the glory of God. Pastor Jill, I think I'm done. We thank God for his goodness and mercy in his word. Amen. We thank the Lord for his word. Amen. If you would just type on your screen right now saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear God, for your word today. Amen. And we just thank the Lord because he's made us ready. He's made us ready. He's made us ready. And one of the things that I, I want to just, and I thank God for what you said, and one of the things I want to highlight out of this is that when God makes us ready, he does not make us ready before uh, everyone. And thank the Lord for that. These rocks were made as living stones, but they were made, amen, in a dark place. Mm -hmm. God is making you in a dark place. God is, is a seemingly dark place, but in secret. Mm -hmm. But what is done in secret will be brought out to the light. He said if you pray in secret, you will be rewarded openly. If you give in secret, you will be rewarded openly. And so whatever we do in secret, it will be rewarded openly. I want you to expect God today to reward you openly. But there's some people that's listening, there's some people that's tuning in, and you've been praying in secret. You've been allowing the tool of the Word of God to, to chisel out those places, those, those things that is unlike Him. The Word of the Lord lets us know that we are living stones. Hallelujah. And like this temple that typifies, that typifies that we are alive when we are not dead. And God, praise God, because he loves us so much, he will cause us in, in our secret place. When we go before him, whatever causes you to go before the Lord, I want you to understand, come before him because you love him. Come before him because you need him. And you realize and you recognize your presence for the almighty God in your life. I want you to understand, it's his love. His tools that he uses of his word, his tool that he uses as his spirit to teach us. The word of the Lord lets us know that he loved that he loves those whom he chastised. Mm -hmm. Or rather he chastised those whom he loved. What kind of father, what kind of mother would look upon his son and her daughter and see them going down the wrong way and not give them instruction and not give them a tool to help them along the way? My God, that is sad parenting. But I want you to understand we have a good, good father. Yes, yes, yes. I said we have a good, yes, good father. Can you put that on the screen right yes. now? I have a good, good yes. father. Yes. Amen. And this good, good father, he loves me. He loves, me. he loves you so much that when it's time to present us, when it's time to present you, whether it is in a congregation or an auditorium, whether it is, however, amen, before a job, when it's time to present you, he'll present you, amen, the way he has made you, where God can get all the glory. No one can take the glory for this. Uh, hallelujah. And the hand and the chisel and all the noise and, of our crying, of our tears, of our even complaints. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like David, where he said, I poured out my complaint before the Lord. Is anyone complaining? Uh, I want you to understand, praise God, that when you complain to Jesus, you tell, tell, tell him all about it. And he will hear your faintest cries. He'll answer by and by, but he'll answer now. Hallelujah. Expect the Lord, praise God, and 
allow him to be that tool. His hand is upon you. His grace is upon you. The spirit of the Lord is upon you. And when at that time a quarry is not a, is not a comfortable place, but when the Lord takes time to present you, he presents us as living stone. And just like the word of the Lord says, and the apostle Paul, he said that we are fitly joined together as one. No one of you is left out. We have Jesus Christ who is the chief cornerstone. Yes, yes. He's the one, hallelujah, that's the chief cornerstone holding everything up together, holding every joint fitly, fitly together. When we are in him, oh my God, when we allow God, amen, to chisel us, when we allow God to make us, when we allow him to mold us and then to present us, fitly joined together. It is a glorious body. As you said, Pastor, look at the temple as a body. He presented a glorious body without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. Hallelujah. And this body he calls himself, he calls it a bride unto himself. I want you to understand, people of God, be encouraged. Know that he is still a healer. Know that he is touched with the feelings of your uh, of your infirmities. And that in the quarry, in the making, God is right there with you. Hallelujah. He is right there with you. If you can just put that on the screen that God is with me. Hallelujah to God. Allow the tools to, uh, of, of whatever he uses to work for his glory. For the good and the bad. For all things. Romans 8 and 28 said, hallelujah. Romans 8 and 28, and yes, I do know it, but I sometimes we get excited and I definitely don't want to misquote it. But Romans 8 and 28 lets us know, praise God, that and we know, do you know today? And we know that all things work together. The tools, the chisel, the hammer, Hallelujah, the praise, the, the, the prayer and the glory, the oh my God, the mountain and the valley, all things work together. Oh my God, for good to them that love God. Do you love them? I believe we have some lovers of God. Amen. We may not be perfect. I'm not asking you, are you perfect? I'm asking you, do you love him? Do you love his presence? Do you love his word? Do you love his people? Amen. You are a lover of God. To be proud of my father. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have to ask God to work on us. Mm -hmm. And he'll work on us. Yeah. When we're working on us, praise God is not in the open. He's a loving father. He's a good, good father. Hallelujah. He's not one that would hang your dirty laundry out. But he'll hang when he gets ready. It's nice. And those of us that remember, and I know some of us don't know nothing about this. But I remember when my mom was you. She would hang out the clothes and she would love for it to be white, especially the white sheets and, or, or especially those, the white clothes that have to be hung a certain way. And, and it was nice and clean and fresh. God does the same thing for us. He doesn't choose to hang our dirty laundry out. But when we're fresh and clean, when we are behind the scenes, when he makes us a mold of my God, hallelujah. He says it's good, it's all working. For our good, to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. That's what we got to understand, people of God. If there's anything I have to challenge you, sometimes in the making, in that quarry, we don't want God's purpose to be done. We don't want his will to be done. But I want to encourage you, you don't have to stay down there that long. Oh, my God. Don't stay down there that long. Let him do what he has to do so he can bring you back up. Yes. Hallelujah. So while you know, the, the faster and the more that we say yes up to God and we surrender our will, my God, we said, Lord God, not my will, but thy will be done. I want you to understand that his purpose will come to pass even quicker in our life. He said, for whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, and that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Oh, people of God, I'm going to close with this. Praise God. Hallelujah. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. It's not always a comfortable place. 
But he loved us. Hallelujah. He loved us. For I am persuaded. Oh, if you are persuaded, I need you to put that on the screen. I need you to put it. Because the Bible lets us know. Amen. When we write, write the vision. Write it down. Write it down. Hallelujah. I am persuaded that neither death nor life. Hallelujah. No angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And if you don't know him today as your Lord and Savior, I want to let you, I want to invite you, we want to invite you to know our Lord. He's a good, good father. Hallelujah. And you hope, my God, while he's making you, amen, he won't allow the hammer and the chisels and all of that to be heard openly. My God. But at the right time, in due season, he'll present you. But if, I want you to understand, he is not just our Lord. He can be your Lord. He can be your Savior. We weren't born saved. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We were born in sin. For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. So you say, why should I give my life to God? Because while you were yet in your sin, he died for you. While we were yet in our sin, he died for us. He loved us and commended his love toward us. Hallelujah. And for that, we are grateful. If you want to give your life to Christ today, don't wait till tomorrow. Do it now. For today is the day of salvation. Pray this prayer with me today. Hallelujah. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come and I thank you for dying for my sins. For I know that I am a sinner and I have need of your saving grace. Come into my heart and cleanse me. Wash me with your blood. Make me a new creature. I denounce my ways of darkness. I denounce the way of the enemy. And I announce that today Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have prayed that prayer, oh my God, the heavens are rejoicing. Glory to God. And we want you to please let us know so we can cover you in prayer. Amen. And we can continue to rejoice. We thank God. We thank God. Hallelujah. We want you to submit right now your prayer request. Submit your prayer request right now. Hallelujah. And, and, and know that he is, he has no respect of person. The word of the Lord says in Matthew, the 18th chapter, he says, now if two or three are touching and agreeing, gather in my name and touch and agree and ask, amen, anything in my name, it shall be done. Hallelujah. Verse 18, uh, Matthew 18 and 24, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of the Lord also lets us know that when we ask, amen, he's there to answer us. When we seek, he is there, amen, to help us to find. When we knock, it shall be open unto us. Amen. So we're asking, we're seeking, and we're knocking. Not just today, but we believe in prayer. We believe that prayer is a launching pad for every mission, for every assignment. And so why don't we today, why don't you put your prayer, submit your request to me, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. As we get ready. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you right now. Hallelujah. Thank you right now. Thank you, Jesus. We get ready to pray. Amen. You feel that like you share this? Share this. Amen. Share this right now so we can go before the throne of grace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you, Lord God, for that one that has given their life to you. We thank you right now, God, for hearing and answering the prayers. God, we pray you right now for that one, Lord God. Lord God, that is, that is uh, sick right now, God, we're asking you to heal it in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you that you are the God. Oh God, that heal it. You have sent your word to heal and to deliver us from all destructions. Right now, Lord God, we pray. Oh God, that you, Lord, will send your healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, that by your stripes we are healed. We rebuke COVID. We rebuke every spirit of infirmity. We rebuke high blood pressure. We rebuke headaches in the name of Jesus. And oh God, we thank you right now, God, for his children healing is the children. We thank you right now for moving, Lord God, and manifesting your promises. Father God, we thank you for as we bless the Lord all our soul. The word of the Lord says to bless your holy name and to forget not all your benefits. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we don't forget the benefits of the Lord. And we're asking right now, God, oh God, that you will bring also financial benefits in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for that job opening up. We thank you for the doors opening up. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We decree healing and breakthrough. We decree increase in the name of Jesus. Father God, you are our Jehovah Rapha. You are the, our Jehovah Sister. You are our Jehovah Child. Lord God, the one who provides in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you right now for being our provider. Father God, we pray you right now, God. Oh God, as you open up the doors, Lord. Oh God, oh Hamako Shanda Roshi. Open up the special circle right now, God. Need an effectual open doors. Yeah, Kanamakoshi. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you that no weapon formed against us, your God. No weapon formed. No weapon, oh God, formed against us, your God. We thank you that now, God, that your love, oh God, will permeate them right now. Let your presence permeate them right now. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for divine protection over the workers, oh God, that have to be there, oh God, in the forefront. We decree right now divine protection, oh God, under the 91st time. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We thank you, Lord God. Oh God, for your angels, keeping them from the surveillance of the enemies. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we rebuke even right now, God. Oh God, the pressure that we're trying yes. to set in, Lord. Yes. Oh God, it gets your people. Yes. Oh God, it gets your mind. But God, we thank you. Oh God, that you have not given us a mind. Lord, God, have a carnal mind, which is enmity against God. But God, we thank you right now. Infuse the Spirit of God. Let the Spirit of the Lord, oh God, oh God, come against every dark thought. Come against every doubt. Cast, oh God, oh God. Every thought that is, oh God, coming against your people that will seek to bring depression, oppression, and defeat. We are not defeated. Oh God, when we thank you right now. I decree and declare victory. Thank you. Victory, oh God, over their mind. Yes. Victory over their emotions. In the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, God. Yay, hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah for the victory of the Lord. Yes, God, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you, oh God. Hallelujah. Even right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So glory, glory, glory. Amen. While you have been in tune today, I know. Amen. That the Lord has spoken to your heart today. So see. Here we
we sow on purpose. We sow with purpose. Hallelujah. Sow that seed today. Amen. And what that does is seals. We have testimonies. The word of the Lord lets us know according to Malachi 3 10. Amen. I tell you that, 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 that you give your tithes and your offerings. We understand that your tithes go to your local church. And as you sow your tithes and give your offering, that your tithes and offering rebukes the devourers. Amen. We need to elevate our minds, rebuking the devourers, not just rebuking, amen, um, power, spirits of poverty, but that which cause heartaches, that which cause, amen, it, uh, um, disruption, that which cause your purpose to be interrupted by the hand of the enemy. I want you to know that he rebukes the devourer. The enemy that has come to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, Jesus, I come that you might have life and that more abundantly. And so I believe that right now, amen, there are ways on the screen is put on there how you can sow, amen, into this ministry. If you want to put it in as an acronym, it's private. God knows. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever it is, you write it and you see it with the seed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We want you to continue to like and to share this video. Also, join us at our YouTube page at Rivers of Water Christian Center, Row CC. And be blessed. We want you to also feel free, amen, to join us in the prayer. We are praying, amen, church, and we want you to understand that we're praying for you. Every Wednesday we have our Fresh Wind Bible study, and we have our 6 a.m. morning pursuit, amen, of His glory. We want you to understand, amen, that God has not forgotten you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. Hallelujah. As we get ready, praise God, to, to, to we're going to see you next time. Amen. We thank you. God bless you. Bless you. In Jesus' name.